INEC figures indicate 44.4 million women will vote in the 2023 elections, even as Nigerians drum support for female candidates across various political parties. And tonight we discuss with INEC's head of vulture education and publicity in Lagos, Adenike Tadeshe, as the commission begins distribution of sensitive election materials nationwide. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anakal. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has said that 93,469 registered voters, um, out of 93 million, I beg your pardon, 469,008 registered voters, 44 million females are voting in this year's general elections. There has been a gender gap between the men and the women, especially in political representation, economic management, education, and leadership even women are particularly underrepresented in processes and disproportionately excluded from consultations that affected them. Now, hence the need for Nigerians to drum up support for female candidates across the various political parties in the forthcoming elections. Joining us on this female roundtable talking about women in politics, I'm being joined by Odwanla Ogundiji. She, Ogundikwe, she is the Social Democratic Party Women Leader, Southwest. We also are being joined by Olufunke Omolara Awolowo. She is the Deputy Chairperson of Lagos State Exco of the Labour Party. We're also being joined by Aisha Haman, a legal practitioner and a member of the NNPP. And finally, we also have Kemi Ashekun. She is a member of the APC, PCC Media and Publicity. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining us and good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good, evening. good evening. good evening. It's so good to have you join us. I'm going to start with um, the guest in the studio. Um, let's talk about the Labour Party and female representation, because, of course, we know that um, there's been an abysmal participation in um, sensitive political or politics for women, even though we make up 50% of the population. Um, but then I realized that the Labour Party does have a female chairman in Lagos, yes. and then you are the deputy chairperson. So that means that uh, there seems to be a bit more room for women to progress. But let's, let's start at the grassroots. Why do you think it's been so difficult for women to be on, at par with men when it comes to political parties? You know, this is something that is um, all over. You're in America, everywhere you go, you know, there's been... I don't know, a resistance of some sort, you know, to allow women into politicking. And um, most of the time is that um, I must admit that most men are intimidated when women get into power. Really? Someone did say that, um, especially in the police force and the army, is that um, the women in the force, they're more rugged, they're more, you know, assertive and... Um, in inverted commas, sort of more wicked, you know, because okay. of the role they play. But you see, women, you know, seriously, you know, when you think of the suffragettes in Britain mm -hmm. and, America. And, um, and America, you will realize that women do things with a lot of passion. And um, most of the time, when a woman seems to be doing better than the male folk or the husband, there's a kind of jealousy that erupts. And um, it always, nearly always ends the marriage, mm. you know, and all that. And so, you know, you see women preaching against women, saying you should stay, you should underplay whatever it is, potentials you carry. And that has been the psyche for a while. Mm. But you see, even in the, because I worked in the, a bit in the banking sector and insurance sector, you see that women are more, should I say frugal? You know, because what we have today, you know, is not, you know, I'm, I'm not the one to advocate women against men, mm. you know, but what you have today has been solely based on the carelessness, the extremities of men mm. in corruption. Mm. And you see, so you're saying that if we have more women in the decision making, at, even at the um, highest level of political parties, we probably will have less problems that we're having, especially exactly. now during elections. Exactly, because women tend to have more intuition, you know, from what I'm a pastor as well, and we do a lot of, you know, counseling in marriage, and you see that nearly almost extreme competition 
between couples, especially when that woman is, you know, surging and forging ahead mm -hmm. in the marriage. And so men are mostly intimidated, and that's why socially men, women have had to sacrifice their potentials mm. for the sake of the men. But it's not happening anymore. We are not going to allow it because it has really, in turn, crippled society, so to speak. Mm. So you see, you see a, a redress of what has been and women are rising, you know, especially when women were very futuristic. You are thinking, what will happen to the oncoming generations, my son? And you see that a lot of our children, they live in the country. Mm. Why? Because things are not so well. And no mother will look on and let that happen. And so we are getting more involved. We are getting, you know, I remember, was it during NSAS? And um, I was home one of those days and my son said, more. Where are you? I said, home. Where are you home when everybody is <laughs> out on the street? <laughs> so you see, for the sake of our children, we must be out there uh, and we must get involved. Okay. Let me, let me go to Odola. Odola is of the SDP. Uh, she talked about the NSERS movement. And as we see um, from the statistics that INEC is giving us, 49.5 million men and 44.4 women are going to be voting um, on the weekend. So let me ask... Um, do you think that maybe the answers movement, just as she said, has pushed more women towards political parties? Because again, as she said, society and some of the things, the narrative that we've had over the years has kept women away from participating uh, in the electoral process, especially joining political parties. Okay, thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, thank you so much. I would say that is correct. Um, the reason being that... Um, the role of uh, us women in governance cannot be overemphasized. And um, in the sense that women in politics governance are unifiers. We, like where I am now, I would say I needed to get this thing done. And it's not convenient, it's not comfortable. I just left the bush and I'm going to another place. So, peace and conflict resolution among a group. Um, actors. We are not, our role in politics cannot, like I said, can never be overemphasized. We, I remember the answers, we were, if you, the, 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 the percentage of women, then there were more, there were, there were many. We cannot just sit down at the fence and be looking at, at men, like the, the lady said, we can't, be, we can't be sitting there in the house and be looking at what would they bring to the table. Where we generally bring a bigger picture of issues, mm. and I think that was exactly what happened during the issue of um, the answers. Mm -hmm. um, we in governance, we the, our political, we're we're so I can say we're emotional um, intelligence when it comes to us. We cannot you can you can't overemphasize us. We're emotional intelligence. There's so many factors you can when it comes to women. There's so many factors you can bring in our population, like she said is more because of majority of what, we're, what, what is happening in the country, we can't mm -hmm. be at the fence. Mm -hmm. So that's what I can say about that. Aisha, let me, let me speak to you. Um, Aisha is of the NMPP. Um, women, they say, are mobilizers. And, and these men who are of the boys' club, who mostly are the ones who are flag bearers when it comes to um, allotting these positions to them, come to you when they need you to mobilize and galvanize your likes to come for the campaigns and to go to the door to doors to appeal to people. The women are the ones they come to. Um, and then half the time, women hold a certain position. Either they are the women leader or you are the treasurer. Um, why do you think that that is the case till today? I mean, we're 2023 and with all of the things that are happening, is it that the women have refused to push or the push is not uh, hard enough to get the attention of the boys club? Well, um, for me, I would say that um, it's an African thing. Uh, we believe women belong to a particular place in the home. But I'm glad that um, civil society organizations, uh, the public sector, and even the international organizations are advocating for women to participate in politics. And um, as we know, apathy has always been the winner of elections by omission. You know... Um, I don't know about the South because my party, the NNPP, has uh, picked 
a running mate for a governor, a governorship candidate in Oyo State. This was recently, that was in August uh, last year. Mm -hmm. um, we are trying to see how we can balance it. But it's a thing in the North that um, women have already uh, been stereotyped to just be wives and mothers. And I think that is the reason why we already feel defeated that we are not supposed to be seen or heard. And I would like to say that as a woman rights activist and as a lawyer, I have always pushed for, I've always fought for the rights of women. I've always advocated for women to participate, not just in politics, but in every other aspect of uh, um, life when it comes to work and career. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we need to do more of advocacy and we need to also make people, uplift people by creating mentor mentee relationships so that these women can thrive. Interesting. Kemi, um, we see that with the APC, you have a young, friendly face for the woman leader, and I think she's from Cross River State, my state. Um, but then, what do you think women will bring that will change the game? Yes, we know that these elections uh, are going to be changed by young people, but those young people also consist of young men and women. Um, what, what will be the game changer this year, and what are the women bringing uh, that would, you know, one way or the other, um, you know, tip the scales? Uh, very good evening to you, Marianne, and thank you for the invite. A big shout out to everyone here, um, else who's here. Um, a women leader in the APC is not just, um, you know, a women leader. She's also a politician, you know, an astute politician at that. And as a matter of fact, uh, the women leader in the APC used to be the head of the commissioners for health across Nigeria. But that aside, with the APC, we do understand that women have a special place and they hold a special place, you know. And that's why in besides the presidential campaign council of the APC, we also have the presidential campaign team, which is predominantly made of women, hundreds of women from across the nation, you know who believe in the candidacy of Ashwajibola Ahmed Tinumbu and his running mate, uh, Senator Kashim Shatima. And because we know that women, you know, are special when it comes to election, whatever you give to a woman, she multiplies. Uh, we know that the women are more than capable of delivering the votes, is why besides the PCC, we also have the PCT, okay, which is basically women, women, women who are going down to the grassroots, they've done their homework, for me and for the APC, I do know that our candidate has never taken women for granted. Uh, if you look at it, even his wife, you know, he had allowed her, uh, her uh, the opportunity to also fly as a politician. And she's been in the Senate for quite a while and she's been doing very well at that. All right. The candidate of the APC, Ashwajibola Metinumbu, was the first person since 19 in 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 this dispensation of our democracy to start the ministry of women development that was headed by the late chief kemi nelson so as a matter of fact for us in the apc we're not just waking up to the fact that women uh, are important and women need to participate in elections we we beyond allowing them that participation we also give them opportunities we also allow them express themselves fully all right to be able to show their capacity and that's that that is what the candidate Ashwajibola met Tinubu typifies mm. okay let me come back to you um they, there's a saying that women are their own problems. In other words, there's not that, we talk about sisterhood, but we say it, you know, in, but in action, we hardly see that because you mentioned earlier on that half the time women are the ones who say, oh, women should not be out there. Politics is, you know, it's nasty. Because I'm wondering, um, how many people would want to go for those 2 a.m. meetings who are married? Because half the time they're asking you, where's your husband? Where are your children? So um, let's talk about su women supporting women. Um, I always use the, um, um, the example of the lady who was running for president and she barely had any votes because we hardly saw women, um, you know, standing behind her. Women lined up behind the men. What, what do women in the, 20, the year 2023 need to do that, what do they need to borrow from the boys club to be able to support other women? Because you see, they're running for this, almost the same offices that men are running for, but the men always find a way to rally around themselves. How do we break through this, you know, um, glass ceiling for us to be able to start supporting one another? Thank you. I'm just going to take it out of your mouth. You know, women 
we tend, there's a tendency to strive against each other. And um, it's a big wonder, you know, it's a big question that I've asked myself over the years. And it's because of the numbers, because there are very few women that actually come out, you know. And because of that, I think the other women have a tendency to have unnecessary jealousy. And so that has weakened, you know, the, the poll for women generally. And um, just to say, you know, over the years now, there's a lot more cooperation because even in the churches, even in society, there are many women meetings, you know, that I've seen and women are now coming out, you know, because one of the things you'll say about a child, a woman, is that once you touch things to do with their children, they said the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. And once you touch a woman's child, and that is now the plight that we are going through. You know, we saw the bloodshed. I keep on saying answers, but over the years, we've seen children turn to drug addiction, turn to third degree, turn because the society is not providing much. So let's take answers out. The society has really failed our children. And um, that is an impetus for any woman to think and act and come out out of their shells so more so women what, is, what are the women because you see I, i'm going to emphasize on your party the sdp has two women at the helm of affairs in lagos okay. how are you going to capitalize on that um i think the lady from the sdp or the nmpp talked about mentoring how many of these other young women are you mentoring because you have to make it look comely for them to That's want to true. participate first of all i want to go back to our party we have a deputy governor that is um very strong, very active. Um, her name is um, Princess Oyefusi. She's a very strong woman, and she's been doing women advocacy for a while. Mm -hmm. If you go to Peter Obi's government, there were a lot of women. He's the one that is very gender friendly, you know, once you have the potential. So we're not just saying because they're women or because they're weaker. They're women who are strong, who have desires, and who want to touch and change their society and these women are coming out. These women are stronger in their even representation. I'm one of them. I'm here. I used to be a presidential candidate of a party, even though I stepped down because I was not particularly ready. It's not because I'm a woman. So you see, that's it. Is it because you're a woman that you're in this race or is it because you have a desire and there's a job to be done? to change your society? That's the question every woman needs to ask. Mm. And when we ask that and it's answered positively, then we can hold hand, hands together and work it out in Nigeria. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm gonna to come to you, um, Odun Odunola. Um, it's interesting, um, I'm still gonna be talking about this issue of support. Um, it's interesting to me because um, most people, when you talk about women in politics and why we should support more women to, for, for political parties to throw them up um, for these offices, they tell you that, oh, what, what good examples can we point to? Uh, how many of these women have gone there and made us proud? And they always make references to the likes of the former speaker, Patricia, uh, Patricia Ite. Uh, they make reference to the former aviation minister, the former minister of uh, petroleum, uh, Alison Madureke. And of course, whether we like it or not, these are uh, real examples. And so what are the other examples that we can point to, women who have made us proud in politics? Okay, thank you so much for that question. First, I'm going to say that um, we can see that the Nigerian of um, our uh, Nigerian today, um, more than two dispensations now, we had uh, female ministers of finance. And um, in my party, SDP, my principal is um, Halaja Amunika Takondiadeola. She has been a woman, she was the first woman, she was the first majority woman, the woman in, in, the, house of, in the house of rep for eight years. I, 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 there has never been any woman like that. She, she was the first woman leader here in the House of, house of Rep. And um, moreover, uh, I would say it was even because of, I, I, I've said a lot for, in Elijah Monica Takondiadala, and that was the main reason why I said yes when we left PDP, because we actually left PDP to SDP. And uh, I decided to say, okay, I'm going to follow this woman because she's more or less like an example to major, to a lot of women out there 
there's that if you put if, if you ask them to get, to put it in on the book to check the first female leader in the house of rep Elijah Mulika Tadela happens to be the first person so I would say and like I said the minister of finance as well so I would say when it comes to that we have a long way to go we we, we have not even we have not even reached we've just started the role of women is not something you can overemphasize I'll keep I will keep talking about the that because we have a long way to go. And like, like I just gave you one or two examples of the, I mean, um, I mean, for the past how many two dispensations now, we've been seeing a lot of women coming out, they want to do this, they want to do that. And more or less, I'm also um, um, uh, a founder of a company. Um, it's not as if we don't have a work, we don't have a job. We have a lot of things that is on ground, but we decided to say, okay, let's move. If this is what, Politics is all about less more, and we're we're pushing it as it is now at eight o'clock. I'm not I'm not even in Lagos. I'm not in but I'm in a, I'm in a village, and I'm enjoying it because we want to we want to bring a lot of things to the table for men to see. We are more accountable to a lot of things. We're we're very flexible, so the role of us is not is our role is not something we can overemphasize. Thank you. Aisha, elections are on Saturday and preparations are on. INEC has received sensitive materials, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and there are, of course, people who are excited to be part of this election. We're having people in diaspora come into the country who want to vote, and these are also men and women. We are having first-time voters, people who have lived in this country for years, not because they just turned 18, but because they've never really felt the need to vote, but they're voting for the first time. Um, are we, how has the NNPP led the charge, I mean, I'm talking about women in the NNPP, led the charge of making sure that the average woman shows up to the polling units, whether they support your party or not? Um, how, what is the level of sensitization? Because, you know, we're always saying that INEC and the NOA have the job of voter education, but then the onus is on political parties who are asking for votes. Well, um, thank you very much for that question. And um, if you check the NNPP, it's a party that has um, gathered a lot of people, especially our principal, uh, Dr. Rabiu Musa Konkosu. He's loved by many people. And um, myself, as a person, uh, I have seen friends of mine that are run organizations, for example, Yaga Africa, and there are so many organizations that have been sensitizing people. My own organization, we do voter education. We've been doing that since uh, last year, June. Uh, we've been going to grassroots communities and because we have social media now, it's very important that we carry everyone along. So we have been sensitizing people when it comes to how to vote, how to use the ballot, how to um, do your verification and all of that. The party is really doing a lot. We're doing a lot. And um, if you look at... Uh, if you look at the social media statistics, for example, you'd see that it's not just men that are uh, supporting the candidate of the party even the social media uh, the social media groups that we have most of them are women we have about 60 percent of people that were that are doing advocacy on tiktok selling our candidates on tiktok on social uh, on facebook on twitter on instagram that are females and young people so nnpp is a party of women and uh, 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 the youths because uh, even if you look at the concosia the concosia movement their objectives, one of their objectives is to empower women and uh, push them to thrive and uh, reach their fullest potential. So we have really tried. Mm, interesting. Let me, let me come to our, our APC, uh, um, um, PCC Media and Publicity um, guest. Kemi, um, what, why, why, tell me why any young woman or any woman should vote for the APC. Again, we're not looking at just this election. Going forward... Why should anybody look at the APC and support it in terms of gender and, of course, inclusion? Kemi, can you hear me? Yes, I think I you're muted. You. I, I had muted my mic. All right, go ahead. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, let me start by saying that some of the things that some of the parties, you know, are trying to do now, the APC has already taken care of. Mm -hmm. The APC has a Progressive Women Academy for young women who want to learn about politics and they are being mentored 
It's something that they can just go online, register. There are courses. If they need to be attached to a mentor, they will be. So there's already the mentor-mentee relationship for women in the APC because we understand that the average other parties, for example, you know, will not give women that opportunity. We know that the women have a way of contributing, you know, to, to, to politics that men may not have. Another beautiful thing about the APC is that while some people will say nocturnal meetings for men, most of our meetings are held during the day. We attend, we're done, and we move. And no woman is left behind in the APC. So, so that so is sorry, what so differentiates can, us. Can, can I just ask you something? I'm so sorry because you brought it up. So, so why do the men have the meetings nocturnally and then you have to have it in the day and quickly go home? What about those no, no, nocturnal no, no, meetings? No, no, what I mean by... No, what I meant to say is that the now the APC has most of their meetings during the day. Most, we, we, yeah, we barely have... I've been to a meeting today, a political meeting today. I'm done. I'm back in my house, you know, and that's fine for me. The APC particularly has something for women. The APC gives women opportunities and that's what and it's not just women if you look at the statistics of the age of our women leader uh, dr beta edu she's not even 40 yet okay and she uh, she is the woman leader we most of the other parties if you check out their women leader they are aged you know they barely have energy and then they really do not cannot um you know uh, come together with some of the young people in the party all right, but having someone like Dr. Beta Edu as our APC women leader makes her very accessible to the young, to the uh, middle age, and to the old. But why again should women, you know, support our party? Women should support our party because our candidate himself, Ashwajibola Metinubu, is one who believes in women. He gives women opportunities. Um, one one of the ways you can testify to that is the fact that his first deputy was a woman, uh, Mrs. Koforola Bucknell. Now, even in um, Governor Fashola's government, his first deputy um, governor was a woman, uh, Princess Adebisi Sarah Shoson. His second deputy governor was a woman, Princess Orelokwe um, Adefulure. Now, they say that if you're going to clothe someone, you have to look at, or if, if someone decides to clothe you, you have to first look at what they are wearing. In the APC, uh, for example, um, we deliberately, Fish out women, the right type of women, give them the right opportunities and ensure. Oh dear, Kemi, I think we, we, we lost that connection with you for a second there. But if you can hear me, can you hear me, Kemi? Uh, it's unfortunate we lost that connection with Kemi. I'm going to come back to you because we still have a, um, a little time to talk. Um, some of the researches that have been done about women's participation in politics and political parties in Nigeria um, boiled down to, you know, their capacity, financial capacity. The men always have money, but the women hardly have the money. So sometimes they still have to rely on men. Uh, to be able to make those, to get the monies to either, sometimes the tickets have to be, the monies to pay for the tickets or intent forms have to be slashed for women. And so uh, most times, you know, the positions that these women run for are not as powerful as, you know. So let's talk about financing the average woman in political parties. Even, I mean, do I have to belong to a political party to say, well, I like this woman, I like what she's doing, mm -hmm. and I want to fund, you know, fund her campaign? Yeah. Yes. You know, politics has been solely based on finances for a while now. And that's why LP, Labour Party, is now so relevant because you are seeing a movement that is saying, I think that inverted slogan saying no shishi. And really, you know, you really don't have to have money. Once you can agitate, maybe play with your phone and say this is who I am. You know, like he said, somebody will pick you up and throw you into the politics, you know, how I really started, you know, I like political arguments and all that. I've always had that from my school days. And I was, you know, at a function and um, I met this guy who kept on engaging me. Okay, what do you think? And he said, can you come for a meeting? So you see, once we are a voice, once you are speaking out, somebody eventually will pick out that potential. And um, like um, today, with no CC, we are very relevant in politics. And um, if things were the way they should be, 
you know, this movement will never have come into being. You know, we're at the height because women are seeing greater opportunities to be involved. The youth, they're getting involved. And it's not about money at all. It's about the voice. It's about being able to reason and speak into the heart mm. of the matter. Mm. Uh, let me come back to um, the um, SDP. What are the things that we, the SDP can do going forward to empower women? Because I talked about the research, mostly talking about monies, um, talking about economic empowerment for the women. Well, we hear about these empowerment programs, whether it be the APC that's in government or the PDP, we hear about these empowerment programs. But half the time, do these empowerment programs really empower the people or are they just monies that are being handed out or rice and wrapper? And how do we try to, you know, take those things out of the way and deal with the issues uh, that need to be dealt with. Okay, thank you so much for, uh, for the question. Let me first say that um, our president um, at um, Social Democratic Party, Prince Adewale Adebayo, is a successful businessman by excellence. He's been in politics for more than, more than a decade. And he's a man endowed with ideas to help our um, big nations to regain its lost glory. I would say with that alone, we are ready to move women when it comes to that. It's not something, it's not, um, the, um, um, I'm trying to look for an adage to buy what I just said. Uh, Prince Adewale Adebayo is working, I would say, in SDP, we have more of women than men. And if you ask each and every one of them, they will tell, they will have, they will tell you how it relates with each and everybody is ready to. We've lost, we've lost glory in Nigeria. I'm so sorry to say it. It's not something that you, that can be done in a matter of one one month, two months, even a year, even two years. But when you have somebody like Prince Adewale Adebayo that is ready to sit down, he didn't he didn't look at us as um, who are we to who are we to to tell him what to do. I think with that we are ready to move. It's not. It's just a matter of time. Okay. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, we're still talking with women. Of course, this is a women's roundtable. And we have represented here the APC, the Labour Party, the SDP. And, of course, we have the NNPP. We'll be right back after the break to still continue the conversation. Stay with us. <coughs> We're still being joined in the studio by Odunola Ogundiji Ogundikbe. She is the Social Democratic Party Women Leader, Southwest. Olufunke Omolara Awolowo, Deputy Chairperson, Lagos State Exco for the Labour Party. Uh, we're also being joined by Aisha Haman, a legal practitioner and a member of the New Nigeria People's Party, NNPP. And we also have Kemi Ashekun. She is the member, APC PCC Media and Publicity. Once again, thank you so much, ladies, for being here. I haven't had so many ladies on set with me in such a long time, so this is a great, a great opportunity. Um, but before we went on that break, I was, I was talking about, you know, um, how women can support women going forward. But let's talk about uh, your political parties and the politics that's going on. Of course, elections are around the corner, and this is an opportunity to market um, your presidential candidate uh, to uh, whoever is listening. Uh, but then, um, yesterday, the APC, I'll start with the APC. The APC had their um, campaign um, rally here in Lagos State, and we saw um, Mr. President also participating. Now, we've also seen all of the politicking and the drama that surrounded uh, the whole campaign season. Um, a lot of people would say that the reason why Nigerians are suffering right now, don't forget, we're, we've dealt with fuel crisis before then, insecurity, kidnapping. It came so close, all the way close to Lagos. You know, sometimes when we hear about this insecurity in the Northeast, uh, it seems a bit far-fetched until it begins to come home. Um, why should the average person want to vote for the APC for any reason? Um, and we also know the Ghanaira cash crunch. Um, the average person would say that uh, they're very angry. And they're not necessarily just angry at the president, but they're angry at the APC. Why should anybody vote for you? Um, I would say here that any right-thinking person, and that's um, without, uh, that's not uh, resorting to insults, right, would vote for the APC. And here is why. Firstly, 
the APC is the first party in Nigeria to give back to Nigeria from what it has taken. And I'm talking about the investments that the APC has made in social programs, the investment the APC has made, you know, in infrastructure, in everything. Um, we inherited a uh, government. Would you care to you know, explain that, some of those things? Sorry, because we, you can't say everything. We want, we want details. What infrastructure? Sorry, would I care to explain what? What infrastructure has the APC, um, you know, invested okay, in? Okay, so your voice is freezing. Yes. Okay, let me give you let me give you a quick breakdown. Um, for the first time in Nigeria, people are receiving conditional cash cash transfer. For the first time in Nigeria, young people who are able to enroll with the end power were able to get jobs for a while. Right, and they were able. Some of them were trained to be able to get into um, different strata of society. Now, for the first time in Nigeria, we have people. Uh, we have a government that is giving back to the country in terms of infrastructure, rail. Uh, you would recall that when the PDP, um, when we're talking about rail during the PDP, a member of the Labour Party today who has stepped aside as the chief campaign person for uh, Peter Obi did say that it is impossible for Nigerians to get brand new trains. The APC changed all of that, and that came at a cost. The unfortunate thing about many Nigerians is that perhaps because we take instant noodles today, uh, you know, people feel that development and growth comes at an instant, and that's okay. not what that's not how it is. Okay, because it, development and growth takes a while. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Everybody has one minute each because we have to go. I'm going to skip you and go. Oh, but you keep cutting me. Mary. I'm so sorry. We don't have time. I'm going to go to the NNPP. Um, why should we vote for the NNPP? I mean, we've seen all the polls that have been coming through. Um, and, and your presidential candidate is not top three. Um, what's his chances and why should we vote for him? Thank you very much um, for giving me the opportunity to market our candidates. You know, they say... Um, we shouldn't because of all, all the things that we've got, been through in Nigeria. I mean, everybody can feel it. The reason why I support uh, Dr. Rabi Musa Konkoso is because of his antecedents, the things that he has done, the track record. In his 100 days in office, that was from 1999, the first tenure that he was governor in Kano State, he has established 20 poverty alleviation programs. He did school of nursing, he did school of fishery, he did... If you check his 100 days in office, there's a book and you can check on the website. These are things that he achieved. He has empowered people with education and that's why we call him Mr. Education. And I think if you would give me more time, I would list every single thing that Mr. Rabi Musa Konkoso, Dr. Rabi Musa Konkoso has achieved in just the 100 days he has done in office from okay. 1999. Because we don't have time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rush this through. Let's quickly give everybody else a little time. Um, I'm going to go to um, the SDP and then, of course, um, we'll, come, we'll come back to the studio to wrap up because we're all, almost out of time. Quickly. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for this opportunity, and I'm going to say it in mind, um, and uh, I'm, I'll speak with the voice of my president, Prince Adewali Adebayo, that what I want to do is replace the branch of politicians who are going to the villa to collect their campaign reward with a functioning government. Thank you. All right, interesting. And that was very short. <laughs> and then let's come to the Labour Party. You seem to be the new bride. Uh, yeah, let's go. The question you want to ask, is there a cause, is there a reason for us to look for merit in a leader? And somebody just said, you know, we're having a crunch, no fuel, no money, you know, you have to buy money. You know, in the Bible they said there will be a time money will fail. And I don't think the time has come, but Nigeria has beat the time, you know. And um, mm -hmm. we are seeing a man who is saying, I'm going to take you from mere consumption to production. When we produce, then money comes in, and that money is legitimate, and it will cause us to grow. Right now, money is being shared in corruption, in such decadence, and Nigeria is being crippled and put in a halt. And therefore, there's a need for a leader with a good attitude and the right spirit and psyche to change the nation. Mm. Thank you. Okay. Well, I want to say I want to say thank you to all this wonderful women who have been here with me in the studio tonight. Um, I want to say thank you to all my guests from the APC, the SDP, the NNPP, and of course the Labour Party. I would like to say thank you uh, to Ogunola Ogundipe. Um, 
Can I get her name correctly? Uh, she is the SDP woman leader, Southwest. Oduola. 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 Okay. Yeah, I will pay a fine for that. Oduola, thank you so much for being here. Olufunke Omolara is uh, the deputy chairperson of Lagos State um, Exco Labour Party. Thank you so much for thank being you. here. Um, Aisha yeah. Haman is a legal practitioner and a member of the NNPP. Thank you, Aisha, for being here. And of course, Kemi Ashekun is the member APC, PCC Media and Publicity. Also a pleasure. Thank you so much, ladies. This was really interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. <laughs> and that's the show tonight. But in preparation for the presidential and national assembly elections scheduled for February 25th, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has commenced distribution of sensitive electoral materials to its local government offices uh, in Cross River, uh, Calabar, and some other states. INEC already has started sending election materials to the right places as uh, of Wednesday, the 22nd of February 2023. Now, recall that on Monday, um, INEC had uh, in a dosage disclosed that it will commence the distribution of sensitive electoral materials to its local government offices on Wednesday. Well, Thank you all for being here. Um, we will talk tomorrow again. Don't forget, from tomorrow, it's three days to the elections. If you have your PVC, get ready. Find out where your polling unit is and make sure that you come out and vote. My name is Mary Ann Ocon. Have a good evening.